Hello, my name is Drew. You're you, and that is exactly who you should be. And this is the Goulet Pen Company. This is a desk full of new products, and this is the face that is excited to talk to you about them. So buckle up, because it's gonna happen. And it's gonna happen from lowest to highest price today, as I usually do. And that means talking about Ferris Wheel Press first. This is Frontenac Blue, a new color by Ferris Wheel Press in their full-size bottle. It is described as an icy blue with blue shimmer, or an icy teal. Icy teal with blue shimmer. It's lovely, it's fun, and if you are lucky enough to purchase one of these, or I don't know, you don't have to be lucky, you just need to buy it, uh, you'll be greeted with a scene of anthropomorphic animals ice skating and enjoying winter uh, escapades in front of a cityscape. So even if you don't like the color, this is a joyous scene. So enjoy that. Moving on from Ferris Wheel Press, we're going to talk about more Sailor Dipton inks. And specifically, we're talking about three new sets and the corresponding bottles of ink that they're going to be coming with. So the Sailor Dipton sets here are going to come with one 10 mil bottle of ink and a Sailor Hokuro dip nib with a Fude nib, dip pen with a Fude nib. Um, and we can zoom in a little bit and I'll show you exactly what's happening here. All right, let's take a look at this box first. This is going to have the ripe fig ink in it. Now it's not a purple ink. Uh, it might appear as though it is a purple ink. It's actually a green ink. It's a very, um, well, all right, these are different. So I'll show you a picture. Ripe fig looks like this. It is green, but the green is coming through as a heavy, heavy sheen. And that's new for Sailor because they have not previously ventured into the sheening category of inks. They've done shimmer just recently when we talked about the first batch of these sets. They did shimmering inks, a coral, a blue, and a green, I believe. And now they've got some uh, sheening inks, which produce a very heavy shine on the surface. So while this is, at its base, a purple ink, the sheen comes through so heavily, a lot of the time it's going to come through as green. And you can see it's kind of represented here, but I'll show you the ink swabs that I did and um, you'll see for yourself. So the Hokuro dip nibs, the ones that are in the set anyway, have this cool sparkliness to them. You can remove the nib, turn it around, plug it in the right way, there it is, click it into place, and you're ready to dip and write. These have the built-in reservoir there, so you do get a little bit of extra ink. They sell them separately without that reservoir, the feed part down there at the bottom. And then since it is a Fude nib, once it's making contact with the paper there, you see that nib is upturned, and you'll get a very broad stroke there. Um, and then when you're done, you just rinse it, turn it around, put it back, and store it and go. So all three of these colors, um, this pen's gonna be the same in all three of these sets. The ink is going to be different and it's going to be a smaller 10 mil bottle, whereas you can get a separate, if you wanted to buy this ink separately, you can get a full size. So the sets, which are all heavy, heavy sheeners, um, Ripe Fig, this one is Blue Flame and then Dark Cave. Dark Cave is a very dark teal, Blue Flame is blue, and then Ripe Fig is a Grurple. Um, the sets are going to be $29, again, with the 10 mil bottle. If you wanted to get just the ink by itself, we're selling those for $24, and that is a 20 mil bottle, so twice the size of this little fella. They're a fun little exercise, well packaged, well put together, and the inks look amazing and very unique, very different than what Sailor um, usually does. I will say, as a public service, that Sailor recommends heavily all over the package that these inks should only be used with these pens and other dip pens. They say expressly that they should not go into fountain pens. Um, at this point, I have not personally put these in fountain pens, but I have seen um, people do it, and I have seen 
inks that we do sell here at the Goulet Pen Company that sheen as heavy as this, and I have used those in fountain pens. So just stating that, but uh, officially the recommendation is that they are for dip pens only. But, you know, take whatever risks you deem worthy of taking, as in life. So let's move on to something not unique at all. Not unique at all. Very, very boring, very run-of-the-mill, very common. Um, and that is a Kaveco. It is a Kaveco uh, Sport. You know, those little pens that uh, are pretty common. Um, just a regular old Kaveco Sport. Except it's made of glass. And it hangs on your Christmas tree. Other than that, oh, and it doesn't work. Um, other than that, run-of-the-mill, very common. Oh, it also is four times the size of an average Kaveco Sport. <laughs> so other than that, it's just a Kaweco sport. Um, so this is a Christmas ornament, y'all. It is kind of huge. I wrote that in my notes. It just says Kaweco Deco glass fountain pen ornament, $32. Bullet point, it's kind of huge. So I wanted to make sure I told you all that because I don't have an ornament on my tree that is this large. Um, and yet, ironically, if I did get one of these, it would be one of the smallest pens that we have. So if you did want a fountain pen ornament on the tree this year, we have it available for you for $32. Um, it is just in this one color, but it is real glass. It is um, hand drawn here with a little logo there. I believe the um, nib slit is hand drawn. The, we've got the feed, uh, the threads are visible, and the trademark faceted cap. And um, yeah, it says, on the tag here that is, this is a Christmas decoration, not a toy. This mouth-blown and hand-painted glass ornament has been created in keeping with the age-old German family traditions. So it seems like there is a, a good amount of handwork that goes into this. So you're getting a nice handmade ornament too, and getting a fountain pen on your tree should you wish to have one of those. So definitely something unique, definitely not something that I usually talk about in these videos. So it won't be around for long because it's kind of seasonal. So it is available now though, should you want it, should you want to get it on the tree before the end of the year, we have them for you. And next up, we're going to talk about a Twisby. And this is a new Eco. And uh, hopefully my phone will pick up the color, but it is a cream Eco with rose gold trim, meaning the center band, the clip, the hardware, as well as the nib. And uh, yeah, this is pretty good. I would say that um, it's probably a little darker. This is better, let me see. Yeah, this is a bit better. Um, so I'll show you a picture so you can see exactly what it looks like, but this is pretty close. Um, it does, I, I left this on because I haven't talked about it before. Every Twisby Eco you will receive has this little tag on there. The Twisby acrylic is, sorry, the Eco acrylic, acrylic is made from a different type of acrylic than the 580 and the VAC 700 and those things that is more sensitive to alcohol. Honestly, most fountain pens are sensitive to alcohol. I wouldn't recommend you use it at all, ever. But the Eco specifically, very sensitive to it. So definitely keep it away. So, like I mentioned, you'll see a rose gold nib here at the top, and then rose gold clip, uh, standard red finial there, and then rose gold center band, Eco RG for rose gold, and then you've got your rose gold band right there between the piston knob and the barrel. It is an Eco, so you don't get any sort of gold hardware within the piston assembly, but it does match up really well with the cream. Twisby has been doing a great job in bringing to market some of these more premium versions of the very, very popular Eco with rose gold adjacent colors. They had the uh, Royal Jade in rose gold, which is phenomenal. They had that um, blue and bronze. I forgot the, I think it's uh, indigo and bronze. That looks fantastic. So these are all $50, so more expensive than your standard Ecos, but as you saw, they've got a lot more going on with them. So that is available now. I believe it is limited. Um, 
maybe it's not. I didn't write that down. So apologies there. But it's here, ready for you to buy it if it sparked a little twinkle in your eye. Okay, it is now the time where we address the video's tent pole, I should say, because it's a Bennu kind of day today. And we're going to start with this one. <clears throat> this one. This is a Bennu Euphoria. It is exclusive to the Goulet Pen Company and it's called the Earl Grey. And it's called the Earl Grey because it's part of our refreshment series, which has included delicious beverages like the ice caramel latte, the confetti milkshake, and a bunch of others. This one was recommended by my friend Adrian, the customer care manager here. Uh, she thought a uh, Earl Grey themed pen would look kind of cool. And we were all like, yeah, you know, that could be kind of cool. We sent it to Banu, the idea. They came back with like this. And they said, yeah, we went ahead and put actual tea in there. It looks absolutely amazing. You have translucent amber throughout. One of the most translucent Bennu pens I've ever seen. So it is quite demonstratory compared to, um, like you can see the converter very clearly in there, which most Bennus have so much going on in them that they are a bit opaque. This one definitely has a good amount of translucency to it, which makes sense because it's supposed to look like tea. Within the resin, within the tea, you're going to see gold sparkles, bluish purpley uh, glitter, and then actual Earl Grey tea leaves as well. All the way up into the grip section, you're going to see that translucent amber, and then every cap is going to have some sparkle and some blue to uh, represent the lavender that you'll see in loose leaf Earl Grey tea. The center band with the new logo is also that same translucent amber. And there you have it. It is just a stunning design. We never thought that Earl Grey, an Earl Grey themed pen could look this amazing. We were just blown away by what Banu was able to capture here. And we could not be happier. We thought it would be cool, which is why we gave them the idea. But what they came back with was just astounding. So we are very, very excited to be offering this exclusively at the Goulet Pen Company for $149. So you'll find that it is a cartridge converter pen with a number six steel nib made in Germany by Schmidt. This also applies, the nib anyway, to the next two pens we're going to talk about. And the next two pens we're gonna talk about are heavily themed for the holidays. This one is called Christmas Twinkle, is this one. You'll see the next one very obvious. Uh, so Christmas Twinkle, is very heavily holiday themed with a big red center band. You'll see that it is numbered out of 500, so these are quite limited. You'll see white end caps on both of the cap and the barrel. The grip section is red to match the center band, so no matter whether or not you are soloing it or having it near the cap, you've got the full color range here. And again, number six nib, made in, Schmidt, made, in, made in Schmidt by Germany. Made in Germany by Schmidt. And then you've got lovely, lovely sparkles throughout the center in blue and green, as well as a mixed white green acrylic on both the cap and the barrel. Fun fact though, this white isn't just white, it's glow in the dark. I have too many lights in here. I can't just shut off right now. I need to shut off like three, so anyway. I'll show you a picture of what it looks like when it glows in the dark. This one is a little bit more expensive than the Earl Grey being $170, still under 200 though, which is a great deal for a pen that has this much going on. And it is a limited edition to, I will say fewer than 500 at this point because they've been selling for a little while. So grab it if you want it, perfectly in time for the holidays. And the great thing about buying a holiday themed pen is that I'm pretty sure there will be more holidays next year and the year after that and the year after that. So it's at least more safe than buying kids shoes because you'll get to have them used more than one season. Parents will understand that. The next one, Berry, Berry Merry Christmas. Yes, the Berry Merry Christmas. I didn't say all three of these pens that we're talking about are Benu's Euphoria models. 
So that's the faceted models that I've been showing. Again, also a Euphoria, Berry Merry Christmas. I'm not entirely sure why they call it Berry Merry Christmas. Um, I'll have to email them and ask them about that. Uh, not really sure, maybe it's a translation thing, but um, <laughs> there are bears, y'all. We've got beautiful, little, adorable, happy, hand-painted bears, little holiday Christmas trees, that bear has a candy cane, stars, and it is only out of 100. This is hand-painted. These little bears, hand-painted. So it is a little bit more expensive. This one is $249, so quite a jump up in price, but hand-painted bears, only 100 made. But news done a few like this. The bears are a holiday-themed version, but they have done the whole hand-painted thing before, and they've all been very popular. They have all sold very fast and have been very well received. I hope that these are still available by the time this video publishes. We are low on stock as I'm recording this. So, taking a bit of a gamble here, but I can't not show it. Even if you don't buy it, it's fun to look at. And Banu just coming out strong with these three new pens, they deserve to be seen because it's just awesome. Banu has been doing a fantastic job this year, and I'm very excited to see what they do in 2024 as well. Moving on to the second exclusive to the Goulet Pen Company fountain pen of today's video, we're going to talk about a Montegrappa. This is an Elmo 01 series, and it is called The Beach. For obvious reasons, when you will take a look at it here, you'll see that it has some subtle oceanic vibes, and then, boom, we have the beach. Hopefully that is obvious. I think it looks quite beachy, quite coastal. And uh, you know what? It's summer somewhere in the world, so we'll just pretend that it is appropriate for the season. And we have uh, right here a steel nib. Now, this steel nib is quite well polished. If you'll take a look at that, it is a very well polished steel nib, and that is because it is coated in rhodium. Montecrappa goes the extra step and coats their steel nibs in rhodium so that they have a gold-like shine to them, which gives them a beautiful, beautiful look, increases its durability, and just brings the whole thing together because from top to bottom, you've got attention to detail and a ton of quality. These pens do take a cartridge or a standard international converter. They come with both. And there will be some significant variation with the stock. Montegrappa is making this resin themselves and as such some will have you know different uh, variations of blue, different measures of dark versus light, some will even have a little bit of sand here up at the top, uh, but they will all have sandy grips. So this will be a constant throughout the entire pen. You will always see darker down here, lighter up here, and sand right here. So that will at least be consistent, but the amount of variation will vary. So this pen is $316, and like I said before, it is only available at the Goulet Pen Company. All right, Magna Carta. We've got two new pens from Magna Carta, two new colors anyway. Um, we've got two new colors in the Mag 600 model, which if you'll remember, was the Flex Pen model that I showed you a couple weeks ago. So this was the flex pen that we talked about, was the black Mag 600 with a beautiful flex nib, custom made ebonite feed that provided awesome flow. And now we've got two additional colors in the red with gold and green with gold. So the red with gold does come across a little bit more uh, brown at times. It's combined with gold, so it definitely gives more of a, uh, more of a dark look overall. But both of them together are exclusively, uh, exclusively being sold at the Goulet Pen Company here. It is a day for exclusives apparently, and they're different but similar. Both lovely, so they have that in common. The green and gold goes really well with the gold hardware. And again, they have the 14 karat gold flex nib that is made by Magna Carta, the feed and the nib both being man manufactured in India with the rest of the pen. You'll see Magna Carta there on the trim ring and then the uh, vintage-inspired clip as well. These pens can be barrel-filled also if you wanted to really increase your capacity. And then here we have the red and gold version, which is quite lovely. Both of them very, very pretty. 
and they will be coming with a converter, but you can use cartridges or you can barrel fill it. And if you didn't see the first time, I will go ahead and write with it a second time just to remind you that while these are very pretty, the nib is something else. Um, these are available for $350, all three of them, so no premium for the colored ones. Wake up, wake up. There we go, okay. Oh, that was trash. Is that a six, Drew? Come on now. This thing has been um, inked up for a while. I haven't written with it today, so it did require a little bit of jump starting. There we go. It's writing much better now. But I'll be real with you. I'm going to leave that in. Um, so, yeah. That one skipped. They're railroading. There we go. We're okay now. It really is the best modern flex nib that I've written with. I'm very happy with that. And I'll also say that this particular pen is the exact same pen that I wrote with weeks ago. And since I wrote with it, it has been passed around to at least a dozen other team members, some of which probably pushed a little too hard. Um, I won't mention any names, but you know, we'll just call them Schmrein and Schmule. Uh, but <laughs> no, I can't guarantee you he pushed too hard, but he probably did. Um, but either way, it's still writing great. So this is a good example of how the pen very well could continue to serve you later after it has been written with and written with and written with and possibly passed around to less discerning writers than you and I. Uh, so it's been a great pen to have and sell and have fun with. So I hope you enjoy it. I certainly have. It's been impressing me because I kind of gave up hope on a modern flex nib actually doing uh, what it's uh, supposed to do because it really did surprise me and it continues to. So check it out if you're curious. Um, yeah. Okay, let's talk about some Visconti pens. We've got two new Voyagers. These are called the Voyager Mariposa and they are both butterfly inspired. So we have got the Painted Beauty, I believe, Painted Beauty Malachite and Malachite's piston is unscrewed. I just felt it on my finger, it felt weird. So, Malachite, Painted Beauty. And here we are, we're gonna take a look at the Painted Beauty first. Um, Voyager, big and bright on the center band there. Trademark Visconti clip, and it is filled with some really nice lacquer there. That looks really sharp, very pearlescent, very pretty. It is spring-loaded, so it's always super easy to get in your pocket or wherever you decide to put it. And you've got the stylized V logo up there on the top. You'll see your piston knob. And then this material is made by Jonathan Brooks of the Carolina Pen Company, made in the US. And thus, these are US exclusive Visconti pens. So the Voyager is a little bit different than the Homo sapiens, but it does share some similarities. You do see the hook safe lock mechanism here. It has a spring loaded inner cap that engages when the cap is pushed and turned. You'll hear that nice click and the pen is sealed and sealed very well, hence the uh, because of the spring-loaded inner cap. You have an 18 karat gold in-house made Visconti nib, standard feed with the Visconti V there as well. And then it is a power filler, which is Visconti's vacuum filling system. So you'll submerge that nib all the way up into the grip section, press this down and then pop your pen is filled with ink. You'll want to do that at least twice to get a full fill, and then you are ready to go, writing with your beautiful Brooks Resin Visconti Voyager. Now, we do have the addition of some of these Vs around here, which is new. You'll see the same thing on the Malachite. The Malachite has black trim, whereas the Painted Beauty has chrome trim. The Malachite thus 
has a much more pronounced series of engravings. Being gold on black, they definitely pop more than the you know, gold on silver here. And there is a corresponding black nib as well. This one has some moisture on it. It's probably tested at the factory. So again, 18 karat gold nib, same nib, but black to match all of the black hardware, which includes a trim ring over by the knob and another one over where the hook safe lock uh, channels begin. So these will vary slightly. We've got some great pictures up, but both are beautiful, one of a kind resins made here in the USA by an extraordinarily talented resin wizard by the name of Jonathan Brooks. So both of these are available now for the price of $796. And they won't be around forever. All right, our grand finale today is going to be a sailor pen. And I'm going to bring the box over here because the box is pretty neat. And I have not seen this pen yet. I've seen pictures of it, so I know it's beautiful. But the story is quite fascinating. So I'm gonna read you a little bit of that and we're going to unbox it here together. We've got some literature, standard sailor literature here. And this is a very nicely wrapped little bouquet of accessories. Um, we've got a polishing cloth and then a converter. We'll keep that all nice and together for the pen's future owner. Beautiful kimono pen sleeve with an actual wood spike to seal it up. That's beautiful. All right, and here we go. This pen is called the Nawate Hakuchirashi Fountain Pen, and this is the Yo version, which is the, uh, um, it's a, a gold, gold flake. That is, that is the Yo. And you'll see a textured Arushi throughout with scattered gold flakes very evenly distributed across the barrel and the cap of the pen. You'll find that there's a little bit of a ridge here, which would stop it from rolling, which is neat. But uh, that I, is probably all Urushi, just built up over layers and layers. It might be the shape of the uh, pen itself. I can't say for sure but I do know that Urushi has been used before to uh, create raised designs like that. So I don't know. I really don't know. Either way, it is unique and it's beautiful. I do love that there's a texture to it. It's not super, super smooth, but the process and story behind it, eh, it didn't roll, yay. The process and the story behind the manufacturing of this pen was quite interesting. It has a 21 karat nib, beautifully, beautifully polished. But I wanted to read you a second about uh, this pen. Uh, officially from the Sailor website, it says that the creation of each Nawate Hakuchirashi pen is an intricate labor intensive process, beginning with an urushi soaked ebony wood to set its foundation. So if it's wood, then this is probably carved then. So it's probably not just the urushi that's creating that shape. Um, it is soaked Urushi soaked ebony wood to set its foundation, it undergoes various stages, starting with a polished base coat, then detailed striation marking and washi paper dressing, and then firming its base with a striking blackish gold foil. The pen is finally crowned with its unique colored foil decoration, sealing its impeccable finish. Uh, the most fascinating part was this though. Toru Toshida the lacquer artist behind this masterpiece is a third generation head of Shiko Yoshida, a Narushi atelier in the Aizu Wakamatsu region of Japan. He ensures that each pen is imbued with generations of artistic expertise. That is amazing. Third, third generation. That's just, it, it, that to me, really seals the deal with this. You're holding or owning in some rare cases, a third generation piece of history, piece of Japanese culture, artistry, um, and just knowing that 
after three generations, there's an artist who is creating something that their grandparent began. Like being able to own a piece of that family history and that culture's significance is something special. So it's, I mean, as far as Urushi work goes, it's on the more subtle side, but I think that that it's, it's, it's still unique in its subtlety. I don't know. I'm kind of in love with this pen if you haven't been able to tell. So ignore me unless you feel the same, in which case, thank you. I appreciate the validation. Um, it is expensive. It's $1,900, but uh, I think it's worth it. Knowing what I know, there have been plenty of fountain pens that have been higher cost than this that I haven't been able to put a finger on and say, that's why it's that expensive. With this pen and plenty of others, I, which I appreciate. As somebody who's, it's their job to sell fountain pens, I like being able to point to a pen and say, yes, this is expensive, but also here, 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 here. Here's the why. I can point to the why on this, and I love that. I can point to lots of whys, and if I continue to do research, which I probably will, I'll be able to find more whys. So if you're curious, we have more information online and they are available to purchase. Uh, only one nib size, I believe this is only a medium. Um, but uh, did I write that down? Yes, I did. It's only available in medium. So check it out if you're curious to learn more. I know I certainly am. Most importantly though, thank you for choosing to spend a little bit of your time with me today. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Have fun, right on. <laughs>